Welcome to EPG Padshala. This module is titled Values and Uses of Biodiversity. As you see, values is uh, the term that used to refer the services and the goods, you know, that is actually the uses of the biodiversity. So the values and uses are nothing but goods and services of the biodiversity. So what are the tangible goods that the biodiversity is giving to the humanity? And what are the services? that the, the, the biodiversity is actually giving to the humanity. So those kind of things that we will cover in this particular module. As you see, the goods of the biodiversity, uh, the number of tangible goods and products that the humanity is depend upon. For example, you might have had the breakfast in the morning or the food that we eat are all coming from the biodiversity, right? So either plant or the animal products, dairy product, for example, or insects, you know, honey. Uh, you might have come by, uh, you might have taken a public transportation or drove your car. So, you know, you need fossil fuel. So the fossil fuel are also product of the biodiversity that we will see that in this particular module. And, uh, you know, the, the drugs, almost 90% of the whole drugs came directly from the plants or animals. So the biodiversity is immensely useful for all these things. A number of industrial products as well. Other than these goods, there are several services offered by the biodiversity. One excellent example is the air we breathe. You see the air has got a lot of oxygen, right? So 65%, more than 65% of the oxygen in the air that we breathe comes from uh, picoplankton in the ocean. So these inconspicuous, little, overlooked marine uh, creatures, these are picoplankton, these are bacteria that lives uh, on the surface layers of the world's oceanic waters. They produce a majority of toxin that we breathe. So we uh, normally we never knew that this particular thing, uh, but these are actually the services that the uh, you know the the world's uh, biodiversity is offering to the humanity. There are several such uh, services that uh, you know the the biodiversity is offering. For example, uh, a number of global biogeochemical cycles. Uh, these are all uh, services. So we will see all these uh, particular goods and services. So services also include cultural benefits, tangible or intangible cultural benefit. For example, spirituality or music, literature, arts, uh, even uh, bequest values, you know, or existential values. All these uh, we will see in this uh, today's uh, module. So let us first see the introduction. Uh, as you know, the biodiversity is extremely important. Uh, for the health and well-being of organisms including the human beings. However, we know only the tip of the global biodiversity, you know, uh, it's estimated that on almost 90 percentage of the whole uh, uh, biodiversity of planet Earth remain unknown. So it's like a massive iceberg. Majority of the iceberg remains unknown to us. So it remains to be discovered. So as of uh, today, uh, there are almost 2 million non-species on the planet. So the whole planet is, uh, uh, whole biodiversity of the planet Earth is uh, believed to be around 8.7 million, uh, excluding unculturable prokaryotes. So if you include the prokaryotes, that is bacteria, the total number is almost 1 trillion. So almost like 0.001 percentage of that whole biodiversity is only what we have characterized till date. So majority of the global biodiversity is remain to be characterized. So we never know the potential uses of those biodiversity. So only 10,000 can be cultured. That is yet another problem with this, uh, uh, you know, biology, uh, biodiversity characterization of the bacterial diversity. So uh, only 10,000 species of bacteria can be cultured. So if you want to study about the real biodiversity of bacteria, you have to use environmental DNA metagenomic approach. So if you look at those kind of approach studies, so the meta-analysis uh, meta of all these studies, uh, a famous paper published recently, they concluded that the, the total unknown biodiversity of uh, planet Earth is approximately 1 trillion. So what is the difference between ecosystem and biodiversity? So ecosystem consists of the biologically interacting organisms as well as the physical environment. So that physical environment attribute is missing in the case of biodiversity. So biodiversity deals only with the diversity of organisms, especially the species diversity because the species is 
the basic unit of biodiversity as well as taxonomy. Biodiversity, uh, you know, rather uh, biasly or skewly, they actually uh, look at the species level diversity. What is the difference here? Values and uses of biodiversity. Values refer the intangible, indirect uses of biodiversity. Uh, uh, also ecosystem services, that is a synonymous term for the values of the biodiversity, ecosystem services. Uses refer tangible direct utility of the biodiversity. What is actually the use of this biodiversity? For example, the food that we eat or the drugs that we use to cure our disease. So all these, uh, these uh, uh, the synonymous term for this particular uses is ecosystem goods. So ecosystem goods and services is the same thing that values and, uh, you know, uh, uses of the biodiversity. Let us first look at the uh, various goods or the uses of the biodiversity. Obvious uses is the food that we eat. So the crops, agriculture, animal domestication for the diary, meat, poultry, fish, honey, etc. All these constitute uh, the, the food that the humanity is dependent upon. Not, not, not merely humanity but all the bio, uh, you know, biological diversity, all the organisms inhabiting the planet Earth is directly dependent upon the biodiversity for the food. So more biodiversity means better for the sustenance of the organisms. Forage, fodder as well. Food additives, the number of food additives is uh, produced from, obtained from uh, the natural sources. For example, agar or caragina, these are obtained from seaweeds. Natural food colorants, natural food preservatives, all these are actually uh, commodities obtained from the global biodiversity. Fossil fuel is also, you know, uh, uh, product, uh, produced by uh, the global biodiversity, uh, although it is indirect, you know. Coal and petroleum were originally, these, are bi these were biomasses. Coal is a biomass of the terrestrial plants, while the petroleum or the crude oil had been a biomass of the marine uh, phytoplanktons. Energy of the fossil fuel originally came from the photosynthesis of the plants. So the energy that we burn and we, we release back to the atmosphere while you drive a car, the CO2 going out of the, the atmosphere. Originally, each, each of the CO2 molecules, as well as carbon monoxide molecules, were synthesized by photosynthesis of those phytoplanktons or the terrestrial plants millions over millions of years ago. So, the supply of the fossil fuel is extremely limited because the process of uh, formation of this fossil fuel takes millions of years. So it is extremely, uh, you know, limited and the fossil fuel, world's fossil fuel is rapidly shrinking. You know, the, uh, uh, that is actually, a, 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 it's a extremely diminishing resource, you know. You cannot actually renew, it, these are non-renewable resources of fossil fuels. In health as well, a number of goods came directly from the biodiversity. For example, in the case of medicine, more than 50% of all drugs came from uh, the biodiversity, mostly from uh, the plant-based resources. And more than 80% of the world depends upon the, the plants as well as animal for, uh, you know, for treatment, if you include uh, alternate medicine as well, because most of the alternate medicines are herbal remedies. So beside medicine, cosmetic products as well, uh, for example, the sunscreen, uh, you know, uh, these uh, SP of the sunscreens are mostly coming from the marine resources as well. So uh, different cosmetic products, the perfumes or nutraceutical, all these are actually coming from the health, uh, the uh, global diversity. There are several industry products as well. Some of the examples include timber, paper, straw, all these are coming from plant resources, especially lignin based uh, wood, woody plants. Textiles, uh, cotton and silk are coming from the global biodiversity. Biodegradable biopolymer or leather, rubber, natural pigments, anti-fouling paints, glues and various jewelry, for example ivory, pearl from the pearl oysters, amber, amber grease from the whale, or perfumes, for example musk, ambergris, essential oils, sandalwood, etc. All these coming from the, the uh, global biodiversity. So uh, uses are immense. There are several other resources that is provided by the global biodiversity. These resources include genes. For example, number of genes uh, that, uh, that provide disease resistance as well as stress resistance or high yielding. 
these genes can be obtained from the, the organisms and can be cloned into genetically modified organisms. It could be plants or animals. So these resources are also valuable. Genes coding for enzymes, biochemical as well as drugs. One example could be insulin. The genes coding for the insulin can be obtained from human pancreas and this can be cloned into E. coli and this can be produced in masse for the commercial uh, production of the insulin that we use uh, often. Biomimetics and bionics, these are imitating the nature. For example, Velcro, that the product was developed by a, a, a researcher, the Austin researcher, uh, he was actually uh, an engineer who went for a morning walk, so in the field along with his puppy. So he, f he found certain seed molecule clinged on to his cord as well as on the first of his dog. So he obtained, I um, mean, he further research revealed that this particular uh, interaction of the seed as well as structure, so that, uh, you know, inspired him to develop the product, the Velcro that we use, that fastening, uh, you know, a fastening band. Even airplane is a product of human ingenuity, uh, a product of the curiosity driven research. So uh, the, the prototype of the airplane, Ornithopter, was designed by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, it is an imitation of the how the birds fly. So nature assisted synthetic products from the natural scaffold is also of course this uh, uh, immense uh, utility in uh, the field of uh, pharm pharmaceuticals. So these are also high, uh, other resources. There are several values offered by the, the biodiversity of the world. The, the values are services. So it can be uh, grouped into four types. So provisioning services, supporting services, regulatory services or cultural services. First is provisional services. These are renewable resources that the humanity is dependent upon. So all goods discussed earlier comes under the provisional services as well as uh, uh, a very important provisional service is the pollination by the pollinators, the insect pollinators also the bird pollinators. A pollination is uh, of immense use for the agriculture. One estimate says that 14.6 billion US dollar annually worldwide, that is the, uh, the value of the pollination, uh, the, you know, the inconspicuous service offered by the global biodiversity. And most of the pollination, of course, almost like 99% of the pollination is done by uh, insects or the birds. Other supporting services include primary production by the plants, of course, only the plants have the ability to photosynthesize, you know, while the, uh, a subsection called chemosynthesis do happen in hydrothermal vents as well as in subterranean uh, environment by the bacteria. But almost the entire photosynthesis on the planet Earth is by uh, photosynthesis by the plants. Nutrient recycling through the global biogeochemical cycles, for example, biogeochemical cycles of the carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and so on are directly dependent upon the global biodiversity. Soil formation is also a process where the biodiversity plays key role. For example, lichens are uh, specialized, uh, you know, they actually, uh, they are involved with the weathering of the, the rocks. And uh, uh, earthworms are of course important for the soil formation as well as detritus decomposers, the various fungal components of the soil. Habitat refugation is a term that used that the biodiversity provides specialized habitats for sustenance of further biodiversity. One example is seaweed beds. So this is actually a habitat produced by the seaweeds uh, underneath the, the global ocean. So seagrass meadows is yet another uh, example of this, uh, this sort of uh, specialized biologically mediated habitats, coral reefs, tropical rainforest, etc. Even human body is home to over 100 trillion microorganisms. These natural microflora is not merely confined to our own human body, but also for uh, plants, animals and fungus, etc. This is revealing the utility of this microflora is being revealed by number of recent studies. Regulatory services include services that regulate major ecosystem processes. For example, oxygen generation, as I explained to you earlier, over 65% of the oxygen in the air that we breathe are produced by the marine picoplankton. So 
you know these services are tremendously useful for the entire life on planet earth all the aerobic life on the planet earth is directly dependent upon the oxygen in the air that we breathe so this oxygen is produced by the picoplankters carbon dioxide sequestration removal of the co2 from uh, the atmosphere via photosynthesis so photosynthesis as you know it fixes the carbon dioxide from uh, the atmosphere to sugars and uh, recently algae and other uh, aquatic organisms are being now used as uh, or potentially explore the, their utility as uh, 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 mitigation measures for global warming you know so use of algae for the climate change mitigation through the carbon dioxide sequestration because uh, algae can sequester they can actually fix the co2 they can remove the co2 from the atmosphere and fix that into uh, uh, simple sugars co2 production by the ruminants a number of ruminants for example the cattle and non ruminants small insects as well for example ants you know ants do have compartmentalized stomach where they have a number of methanogenic uh, bacteria that release the co2 uh, to the atmosphere so the carbon dioxide production by the cattle as well as the ruminant organisms is a contributing factor contributing to uh, the global warming it's not merely co2 but also the methane the methane is also a greenhouse gas regulating services includes purification of air and water you know several plants have the ability to purify the air so it is incorrect to say that the trees are uh, they can purify the the all uh, you know pollutants but do they do have certain plants do have uh, you know uh, ability to remove the toxic substances from the air as well as from the water wetlands naturally purify the water by removing excess nutrient load that this nutrient load come from the upstreams of the river and uh, most of these nutrient roads are being removed by the wetlands before being discharged in the coastal region so if you remove this wetlands if you change the habitat if you construct the wetland if you reclaim this wetland the nutrient load is no more being removed from the riverine systems and this excessive nutrient load uh, will lead to eutrophication in the coastal region that wrecks havoc on the marine coastal uh, biodiversity so wetlands as well as flood plains they buffer against the disturbance perturbation so uh, especially for the flood you know if you if you convert these flood plains into uh, human inhabitable regions so the flood becomes a prominent feature so uh, you know that uh, this uh, this biodiversity actually provide uh, a number of uh, advantage for disturbance regimes as well by providing themselves as a buffer regulating service also include many plant species that are hyper accumulators of the heavy metals these have the potential to use in the phyto remediation the phyto remediation is usage of the plant material for removal of the, the toxic substances from the environment for example sunflower can accumulate arsenic willow tree can accumulate cadmium indian mustard and poplar trees can accumulate lead etc so these are some of the examples of the hyper accumulators bio augmentation the term the bio augmentation is used to refer when bacteria or microalgal cultures are used to speed up the degradation of the contaminant one example is the municipal sewage treatment plants these plants employ trickling filters uh, that contains a biofilm of the microorganism so here the biofilm of bi microorganism is being used to remove the excess nutrients from the industrial uh, sewage bacteria as well as uh, genetically engineered organisms for oil spill cleanup this is a, yet another example of the bio augmentation biological control even in the biological control though of course we are highly dependent upon the biodiversity uh, some examples include uh, to control the rat infestation traditional humanity has been used uh, you know employed by the cats ladybugs is used for the aphids parasitoid wasp introduced to control the greenhouse white fly and predatory mite introduced to control the spider mite infestation uh, other examples involving microorganisms include entomopathogenic fungi widely used to control the pest aphid 
and baculoviruses to control various insect pests. So biocontrol through GMO containing responsive or uh, responsible genes is also a viable strategy for biocontrol. Examples include BT gene that is cloned into various uh, genetic resources, for example, BT cotton, BT maize, BT tobacco, etc. So this BT, the name comes from Bacillus thuringiensis, the bacteria uh, that has uh, a, a gene called cry gene and codes crystal protein, delta and a toxin. So this particular protein is specifically toxic to a number of insect species while the, this particular uh, protein is not at all toxic to the, the human consumption. So BT, uh, for example, BT brinjal, there is no harm that we, you know, we get if we consume it, but uh, it is specifically targeted to, uh, you know, uh, the insect species, so it actually dies. Off late, a system called integrated pest management system is what we, the, the researchers, uh, uh, potentially make use of instead of simple biocontrol. It's a, it's a management system. What is the difference here? The community ecology is also regarded with uh, due care and prime importance. So integrated pest management system is not targeted for the total eradication but to control. So the, the aim of IPMS is to control or uh, you know sustainably control the pest, not the total eradication. It also, IPMS also involve, uh, you know, acceptable levels of pesticides as well as, you, you know, levels of pests in the field or use of the pesticide. So responsible use of pesticide is involved in this IPMS strategy. So it is a combined approach that involves various alternate strategies including biocontrol, synthetic pesticides, mechanical control cultural practices, etc. for the management of the pests. So that is ex extremely important. So there is a very interesting term in the community ecology that is something called portfolio effort. So portfolio effect uh, is that, you know, that actually analogous to the portfolios in uh, a stock market. So a good portfolio in mutual fund is the one that contains various funds, you know, high risk funds or low risk fund all kinds of uh, uh, portfolio. So this balanced portfolio is good. Why? Because it is resilient. You know, it can spring back from huge impacts. Similarly, uh, at, uh, you know, a community um, including mixed species from various trophic levels, uh, you know, primary producers, consumers, all these different kinds of uh, a mixed community is more resilient. So crop monoculture that has been in use traditionally even now majority of crop fields are monoculture now the trend is uh, to investigate the polyculture so the culture of the crops along with the different uh, other varieties of the plants so instead of going for the traditional aquaculture the trend these days is to investigate the possibility of multi-trophic aquaculture so IMTA, so that's a new trend in aquaculture. What is this IMTA is all about? A number of seaweed species are deliberately introduced into the shrimp or fish aquaculture systems. So that can assimilate the excess inorganic nutrients. So that uh, the nutrient load is a major problem in these aquaculture fields. So we excessively pump in the nutrients. So that causes eutrophication. So instead of that, we have to remove this inorganic, uh, you know, nutrients from uh, 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 from these fields by uh, deliberate introduction of certain key seaweed species that do not bloom. A number of shellfish species, for example, abalone, are uh, introduced to this particular fish aquaculture fields to extract the organic nutrient load, for example, fish excrements. So the nutrient load could be organic or inorganic. The inorganic nutrient load can be assimilated by the deliberate introduction of seaweed, while organic nutrient load you need to have uh, certain detritus feeders, uh, for example, abalone. Excess nutrients have uh, effectively been used by other trophic levels. Sequestered, uh, you know, the problems such as eutrophication can be prevented if this excess nutrient load is effectively being sequestered by other trophic levels. Number of filter feeders such as caprophagous organisms, caprophagy means organisms that can assimilate the excreta. Decomposers, 
debt rewards such as fungi can also be introduced part of this system. So such a system is more balanced, resilient, stable and is more economical uh, you know as the, the fishermen can as well harvest the abalones and seaweeds in addition to the fish or shrimps. So in traditional uh, aquaculture fields the only viable commercial product is the fish. But in this AMTA model it's not merely fish but the, the fishermen can sell the seaweed products as well as well as uh, abalone and other uh, products. So there are several cultural services are also being offered by the global biodiversity. The cultural services include tourism, for example, natural hikes, cruises, bird or butterfly watching, ecotourism and agri-tourism. All these activities are directly uh, you know, linked with global biodiversity. So if the biodiversity is impacted, it will have huge repercussions on the tourism industry as well. Several hobbies, hobby groups, for example, gardening or fish keeping, specimen collecting, all these will be impacted if the biodiversity is not being uh, preserved well. Uh, uh, so as the spirituality as well. There are several nature based or nature worshipping pagan religions in the world. For example, Hinduism or uh, uh, Japanese Shintoism or ancient Egyptian Kemeticism are all nature worshipping religions. And most of these religious as well as other spiritual traditions and philosophies do have embedded, embedded uh, the nature conservation scenarios in their system. For example, uh, the sacred grooves uh, of um, uh, Hinduism uh, that you can see it in South India as well as in the Northeast India, uh, you know, uh, that, that has uh, certain groves, uh, untouched groves that is an uh, epitome of nature conservation. Liberal arts, performing arts, painters, sculptures, music, literature, all are being benefited, all are being inspired by our natural resources. In addition, uh, world's biodiversity do have bequest value. So the, the term bequest value refers that these resources might not have immediate uses of today, but it might be having immense use in the future. So we have a number of species being discovered each and every day. So these species might not have immediate impacts on humanity, but it might have uh, you know potential uses in future. So the future value that is called the bequest value. In addition the global biodiversity also have existential value. The term existential value uh, refers that these are valuable simply because they exist for just for the sake of knowing its existence. For example a number of people all around the world have never been to tropical rainforest or they had never been to uh, you know to a tropical coral reef for example Great Barrier Reef they might have seen this Great Barrier Reef through excellent documentaries uh, you know uh, through uh, interesting channel for example National Geographic or Discovery Channel and they know that these resources are important so there is actually the existential, existential value so in case these particular uh, you know locations are affected so they feel sadness you know, so that particular value is called existential value. So the value simply for the sake of knowing its existence. So in summary, at present we know only a very, very small part of the global biodiversity, almost, uh, you know, 99% of the global biodiversity remains to be explored. So yet it is clear that the biodiversity has immense uses and values that has ramifications on every part of the human existence. Global biodiversity is immensely useful for the humanity as it produces several renewable goods such as food, fodder, foliage, drugs, cosmetic products, nutraceutical products, wood, paper, rubber, leather, perfumes and so on. World's non-renewable fossil energy resources are also a product of the biodiversity as the rate of production is extremely slow, petroleum resources of the world are rapidly diminishing. Apart from tangible goods, biodiversity also is useful to the humanity in a number of other ways, including various services that it offers. So services can arbitrarily be grouped into four as provisioning services, regulatory services, supporting services or cultural services. So perhaps the most important among the services of the biodiversity is the global biogeochemical cycles as well as the production of oxygen 
combined with natural sequestration of the carbon dioxide. Another service with huge economical ramification is pollination. A mixed community involving multi-trophic level ecological niche is far superior, resilient and stable compared with a monoculture, the culture cultivation of just one species as commonly used in agriculture or aquaculture these days. So integrated multicultural aquaculture, uh, multitrophic aquaculture is an example of such a polyculture system in aquaculture. So polyculture system is also used for agriculture as well, especially in the crops. Biodiversity also provides several cultural values such as inspiring artisans, writers, painters, sculptures, musicians and so on. A number of world's pagan belief systems have inbuilt biodiversity conservation elements. For example, sacred groves of India, for example. So in summary, the biodiversity is highly valuable. So it has an immense use as well as values. So because the biodiversity has a number of uh, tangible products, for example, foods and drugs, and intangible products, for example, you know, the air, that we breathe has a lot of oxygen that is being produced by the biodiversity. Also, you know, global biogeochemical cycles and various inconspicuous services that the biodiversity offers to humanity include spiritual services as well as ecotourism, you know, and existential and bequest values. So, in summary, global biodiversity is extremely important for the humanity and it's our duty to preserve the, the world's uh, you know, biodiversity. Thank you.